It's so easy those first few weeks and months to just hold your breath because you don't know you don't know what's going to happen next. You feel things that are are changing around you and and you don't know what's going to change next and you just forget to breathe. I could just see, sort of see how you know my world was destroyed. It's a death. I mean it's an absolute total. It's death. Um, for some people it blows up in a nasty car accident, for other people it's just sort of like, I mean my marriage, it's just sort of died in its sleep. Um, and there was a body and, you know, maybe one day we'll have a funeral, maybe, maybe we won't, you know, but it's, there's no going back. Um, and I can't grieve that I could have changed anything to have changed this outcome. There's nothing that I could have done to undo the ultimate reason. My marriage died and that was, and my marriage was a sham or whatever you want to call it. That is one part of it. But the other part of it is the whole process I went through, the whole thing that happened when my husband came out has led me to be a whole different person, more the person I was meant to be. And that was a gift. And I can't say, you know, I don't have to say that either it was horrible, terrible, my life is over, or I had this gift. Saying I have this gift doesn't mean I'm denying that the other happened. I can have both. I can look at it as both. It's a package. It's a, it's A and B and not just A or B. What I thought was that we would walk out of this together, supporting each other. Um, that didn't happen. Um, and what I realized was I didn't just lose my wife, I'd lost my best friend. My best friend and I couldn't walk out of this. My best friend and I couldn't support each other. Right after disclosure, I was in shock, of course, and fix it mode, I'm a fixer, I've realized. So I thought we could still stay married and make things work and be co-parents and at least until our daughter turned 18. That's one thing I decided when I was very young was that I did not want to be divorced. And that's not what I wanted for my children. I thought I would be married forever. It was actually all the elements of a movie. You know, at first I didn't tell very many people. Yeah, I felt it was her secret. But then I, as I tried, started telling people sort of what happened, um, they didn't know what to say. You know, and I couldn't blame, I would have no idea what to say to something or someone um, who had all the stuff happen to them. Although I feel the pain, because <laughs> I'm sort of empathetic. Um, but, um, you know, they said a lot of really wrong things, but it was just, you know, it's all God's will type stuff. And, um, and even, you know, it was, you know, just meant to be, you know, even shit happens, <laughs> you know, it, it, the words weren't comforting, but the effort was, you know, I realized they were trying to help. I realized that I had spent my entire life all my energy, all my resources, um, trying to force something to happen, for something to work, for something into some kind of a proper picture. Um, so when this exploded, I finally could say, there's nothing left but myself and what I can do for myself and how I can help myself. I've lost everything that I tried to build. Um, there's no way that I'm ever going to get anything back from my marriage that will that will support me, that will nourish me. So how am I going to move forward? There's a lot of crying on, on, on both sides, but more on his than mine. I mean, it was a process before I actually, uh, I mean, I was in shock. And I, it hadn't occurred to me, and I had not yet accepted that um, my life was about to really change a lot. 
and when you feel there's a part of your life or your concept of your life that's threatened, you will deny it. And, and you know, the saying, denial isn't just a river in Egypt. Uh, you know, as much as a person who is honest and open and into reality, when your whole life is turned upside down, you don't want to see it. You want to pretend it doesn't exist. And you can fool yourself. I just felt that my bucket was empty. And I had no purpose. It was around Christmas time. Um, I was actually in another support group for divorced people and I knew that I needed more detailed support. People that, when you say, do you know what I mean? And they say yes. And you know that they know what you mean. People that understood my situation and I'd lost most of the people in my life that I thought would understand it. Um, and through the, the weeks and the months after that, I formed what seems like lifetime lasting friendships of people that supported me during the time which I couldn't even support myself. These people who were pretty dear to me, um, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, couldn't believe that they weren't really seeing both sides. My faith was shaken. Um, who was God? Was there a God? Um, I always considered myself a good person and always wanted to do what was right. And I just felt like this is the reward I got for doing that. And so I'm still on that um, journey, religion and spiritually. The strangest thing is that my faith at least in the aftermath, was actually strengthened because I guess I needed grounding. I realized I didn't have it. I had had a strong faith when I was younger and it had sort of slipped away. And I found an awful lot of solace in returning essentially to my roots. As painful as it was, I am grateful that not only was he given the opportunity to be the person he was meant to be, I was given the opportunity to be the person I was meant to be. I didn't have to spend the rest of my life trying to please someone who couldn't be pleased because I don't have the right body parts. I never said I love you to people unless I really, really meant it. I never threw those words around. and. I try to say it more often now because I really do love people and love my friends. My friends have really been there for me. I've lost some friends or I've had to um, figure out that some of my friends are just acquaintances and they, they're not capable of being there for me for whatever the reason is, but it's usually to do with them, not to do with me. The only person that you can trust is yourself. The only person that will take care of you is you. Um, and being able to really be emboldened by that and to embrace that has actually helped me begin to have some trust in the world because I know I can trust myself. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for me and that's all I need to know. When I was looking for and found the, the, the network, I realized that at that point I needed to take. Um, I did, and everyone gave freely. Um, and once, once I felt like I was on a little more solid ground, not that it was a you know, constant bedrock, but um, hopefully I gave back and helped someone else out. Six months, I mean, I lived and breathed straight spouses just was that's what kept me alive. Just the, being able to, to talk to people and see people that had waded through the river and had come out the other side and it gave me hope that eventually, even though there were many moments when I felt like I was drowning, 
It gave me hope that eventually I would also emerge on the other side. Everybody in this group wants to help other people. Everybody in this group wants to be okay. And I think that's the, the running thread. And, you know, a lot of people you see going, I've done it at times, going, I'm good. I'm good. Um, until tomorrow when not good. And knowing that there's this, this group, this community, that at any moment you could reach out and they'd reach back, not expecting anything. To me, the gay thing felt like being a battered wife in a lot of ways, but without any police reports or scars to show for it, then it gets shoved under the carpet. So I'm in the midst of a crisis. How am I going to deal with this? What am I going to do? And the light just turned back on me and said, all right, you've got to dig deep. You've got to get underneath all of this anger and this grief and this bitterness and this betrayal and this... Um, you know, just get down underneath it, and underneath that, you'll find the space and the and the energy and the and the love that you've always been looking for. I understand how you feel now. I have been there, and I want you to know that as much as you feel that your life has ended, as much as you feel that you'll never experience joy again, as much as you feel that you want to hold on to what you have you will find out later and it'll be a lot of time and a lot of pain later but you will find out later that you can experience joy that you can find again a life and you can find a better life than the one you had because it will be based on honesty and not on deception and not on on not the truth of who you are and who your relationship is you will find incredible life after the gay thing. It will be amazing to you and you don't feel that now that'll ever happen, but it will.